All right, part three, and here comes the big money. Question one, what's the reported average population of cities within 50 miles of a state capital? Wow. So first of all, let's see if we have a data set that has state capitals. Oh, we do. That's good. I'm going to turn off the old stuff we were using. What else do we need? State capitals. And it would be nice if we had a cities layer that had population. So let's double check that. I'm going to open the attribute table for the cities. And hopefully we'll find, ooh, pop 2000, just like it says here. So this is the field it wants us to use. We've got some funky values in here. So we've got negative 999. That indicates to me that we don't have any data collected for this city. And it maybe has something to do with it being not quite designated a city. Um, I'm not sure. But we want to use this field and we want to sum Oh, we want to find the average population of the cities that are located within 50 miles of a state capital. All right, so the first thing we need to do is isolate which ones of the red points, which are our cities, are within 50 miles of one of our green points, which are our state capitals. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit easier to see. Let's make it a star. Oh man, that is awkward. Okay. All right, so what does that sound like to you? To me, it sounds like I need to select things based on the location of some other things. So I'm gonna do a select by location. And again, our selecting feature is the anchor feature. In this case, we want this to be our state capitals because we wanna know how many things there are that intersect or are within a distance or are near these. And so we know this needs to be within a distance. I'm going to use within a distance geodesic because we're looking over such a large area. And then this needs to be our cities. So what cities select the cities that are within a distance of the state capitals? And our search distance is going to be 50 miles. Uh, what was I going to say? There should be some concern over a state capital being represented by um, a specific XY dimensionless point. If we zoom into this thing, I hope that you would sus be suspicious about um, how big a city, a capital city really is. So here, you know, where does the city start and end? Um, right now we have a point and the city itself could be 50 miles wide which make, might make it difficult to actually define how many cities are within 50 miles of an XY point that doesn't have any width or area to it. So that's something to be aware of. But for our purposes, we're treating it like um, how many cities are within this XY, the 50 miles of this XY point, dimensionless point. All right, so we've got our tool set up here. Let's go ahead and run it. And first, I would say, let's look at the map and make sure it worked. But second, um, you can see, here's our city's attribute table, that 7,000 out of the 35,000 points have been selected. So that's, that's a good start. Um, I'm going to zoom out. Okay, and you can see there's a lot of selection around each one of our capital cities. So that looks pretty good. Um, we could go in and verify by using the measure tool and measure kind of across. Well, would help if we did it in the right units. So from Jefferson City out, yep, around 50 miles if we, okay, so that, that feels correct. So then the second question is, what's the reported average population using this of cities within 50 miles? So right now we could just jump in and use our population field, but we need to deal with this because if we average using these values, we're greatly gonna be bringing the average down. So first let's just isolate so that we're only looking at the selected features. And then let's do a select by attribute where we're going to 
remove from the current selection where population 2000 is equal to negative 999999. I'll hit OK. All right, so already our, our table has updated, and it looks like if we sort this, hopefully we'll find that all of those negative 9999s are gone. Um, it just dropped those out of our selection, and we went down from 7,000 down to 3,000, or almost 4,000 cities. So we did lose quite a, a bit, and you could see right along here how many of those were dropped. But we know those numbers are incorrect, so we really can't account for them. Um, if this was research I was doing for somebody, I would make sure that I brought this to their attention. If it was my research, I would find a different data set that actually used the, the types of cities that I knew I wanted to be accounting for. All of those things are considerations that you'd have to make, but for our purposes, this is gonna work. Um, right now, we have cities that are within uh, 50 miles of a capital that have a reported population for the year 2000. And I just right clicked and I'm going to explore the statistics of this field which typically gives me um, a different window, but right now it's showing me that the population has a mean of 11,686 uh, people. Um, let me just close that and see. Or go here and let me just try one more way. Uh, if I visualize this, just, oh, that gives me what I was looking for. This is what I typically Here's the same number, mean 11,686. And then here you can see there's the full data set, which um, is not going to have uh, a good mean to it because it's got all of those negative 999s. But in our selection, here that number is repeated for us, 11,686. So that's where we got that number. And you can see that I rounded it. Um, and that's totally appropriate because of, you know, we don't really know because we've got all these cities that were dropped out. So rounding it is totally legit. All right, Whew, that was number one. Number two, based on the country field in the world countries map layer, which country has the highest density of Starbucks? All right, we know we need a country field in the world countries map layer, so let's start there. I'm gonna turn off this, close all these attribute tables and views, get rid of that, clean everything up. We know we need Starbucks and we need the world countries map layer. So there's that. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out to this so we can see what's going on. So I can go up to the map um, if I'd like this to look a little bit more reasonable. Let's go into the properties and let's just display this in something that's more global. Uh, let's see here. We could even just go geographic on it. Let's do that. Okay. Oops. So now we have countries and Starbucks. And we want to know, based on the country field, which country has the highest density. In order to figure this out, we need to know the count of the Starbucks within each country. That's just like uh, we did with the Starbucks in the States. So that's just the repeat tool of using the summarize within. Let's start there. Our input polygons are going to be our uh, world countries. We definitely don't want to use one selected record. So I'm going to go up and clear my selection. Not sure what I had selected, but OK. And then we want to summarize the number of Starbucks. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. And we'll wait and see what our output looks like. It should look exactly like this, but our attribute table will have a new count field. Turn off my input and evaluate my output. And hopefully we'll see the count of points over here. So there are quite a few that have zero. Let's descending. Okay, so if it was asking us which country had the highest count of Starbucks, uh, we would know that the United States has the highest count, but we want to know what the highest density is. And this isn't a Starbucks per person, it's a Starbucks per area. So 
based on the area of the country, what has the highest density of Starbucks. 